Welcome to the Pharmacy Quality Solutions Quality Corner Show, where we talk quality of healthcare and explore what that actually means. Let's dig into performance measurements, the equip platform, pharmacy goals, and personal goals. We will also occasionally cover topical healthcare news and maybe throw into the conversation a few of our own nerdy passions and hobbies. So turn us up. The Quality Corner Show starts now. Hello, Quality Corner Show listeners. This is your host, Nick Dorich, and we welcome you to the next episode of the Quality Corner Show. This episode is going back to talking about quality measured data. This will actually tie back to a prior episode. So at this point, I would suggest you make a note to go back and listen to episode 19. In that episode, we talked about the importance of understanding year-end or calendar year data. This was an important topic since most quality measures that are utilized with the Medicare Star Ratings Program and also with most pharmacy performance programs utilize that 12-month view of performance data. In that episode, I had the pleasure to be joined by Cora Eilders from the PQS team. We are going to bring bring Cora back for this episode, but we'll also add in Emily Andres for this topic. Cora and Emily, welcome to the show. How are you both doing today? Hi, Nick. I'm doing well and happy to be back. Hey, thanks for having me, Nick. Happy to be back as well. Excellent. Well, we'll go ahead and we're going to jump into today's topic. So we're going to get right into our questions since with performance data, there's a lot of information. So we'll make sure to focus on those details. So question one, and as it relates for year-end data and utilizing performance information, strategically, we know it'll be a good idea to record and launch this episode around the middle of the year because it's a key time for pharmacists to review their performance measures from last year, but also to start analyzing their performance for this current year. Before we go into the strategy, it's important for us to talk about how year-to-date scores behave or change as we collect additional months of data. So Cora, we're gonna present this first question to you. Um, Can you explain how year-to-date scores change over time as we go throughout the course of the year? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really great place to start. Um, The last time I was on the podcast, we were discussing year-end data. And so we were looking at year-to-date data, but had the full 12-month picture. And so now we're kind of taking a step back mid-year and wanting to understand how that year-to-date picture builds over the season. Year. So I tend to metaphorically relate the year to date measurement period to the act of building a sandcastle. So as time goes on, um, you're able to kind of build your sandcastle up over time. So if we're thinking year to date, um, the first period that we're able to have data is once we have at least three months worth of that data to look back on. So with an equip, that data is not available until the May refresh. So upon initial display of your data, um, what you're going to see is some some relatively low patient counts. And so over time, as the measures build, um, more patients begin to qualify for the measure. So thus building kind of the base of your sandcastle up. So as a rule of thumb, um, patients for the adherence measures um, have to have at least two fills of a qualifying medication to be included. So when you're looking at three months of data, you may only have a a, a small subsection of your population that qualifies for the measure at that time. So as we continue through the year and add more months in, more patients will begin to qualify for those measures, kind of building your sandcastle up even more over that time. Um, So then once we hit around kind of the middle of the year, Uh, you you see kind of a leveling off of the amount of patients that you have being added into the measures. And this is when we really start to focus in on understanding what happens over time as like an aggregate performance level for these measures. So performance tends to be the highest around August. Um, That really consists of the data for the first six months of the year. So as patients start to um, qualify for the measures, adherence rates tend to be a bit higher. And so this is really kind of is the the height of your sandcastle. And after that, as we move in towards the second half of the year, um, sometimes we see patients start to struggle with their adherence. So this is when scores tend to Um, on an aggregate level, really just trend downward. And so at this point is kind of 
where we're looking at year-to-date data and really challenging pharmacies to step up to the plate and make sure that you kind of bolster your sandcastle down and it, it stays consistent through the end of the year. So um, this is kind of the best time for us to really release this type of podcast to, to allow for that forward thinking for understanding that this is the time to really build that base of your sandcastle so it is a little bit easier to kind of withstand all the elements that are, are coming in the second half of the year. Yeah, Cora, the sandcastle metaphor here is very interesting and it's, I, I think, a pretty accurate description. Um, when, when we think about building up and getting towards that higher peak, we get numbers that can start to slip off as the higher that we go, right? And that does kind of work the same way for a pharmacy as they're adding more patients or more patients that can be tracked. Um, that same level of care or that same level of follow-up, at some point there, that those numbers or that capability, the time that it's going to take is not going to be there consistently for, for all the patients. So this does go for pharmacists and for the pharmacy team members into how do they utilize the data, how do they take the right strategic ap approach in identifying the patients that um, can, mo can benefit the most for the interventions at that particular point in time. Um, so I find that, again, really appreciate that. And Cora, if there's one part that you can comment to with this regard, uh, I think this is mostly in reference to adherence measures, but does this also exist for uh, other measures like a statin use in diabetes or maybe immunization measures. It, it's kind of the same effect with those measures, right? Yeah, they, they tend to act a little bit similar. Um, if we're specifically calling out a, a statin use in diabetes measure, um, those ones we, we don't necessarily see as much at fall since those measures tend to just build upon each other and um, kind of as, as soon as for statin use in diabetes, we the intended results um, in a statin fill is, is met. Those are able to build up a little bit more, but this really hits home for the majority of quality measures that are out there in the market. Thanks, Cora. So generally for the measures here, patient count increases, adherence scores, we're going to see those typically decrease. For gap and care type of measures, those, those may actually have an opportunity to increase. Now that we've addressed how year-to-date score changes and patient counts can progress throughout the year, let's discuss how pharmacists and other members of the team can use this information. Admittedly, I've heard from many pharmacists that this topic can be confusing and that it's very difficult to act on the information. So for this next step, I'd like to try thinking about this in a different way. From an action standpoint, what can a pharmacist do, what can a pharmacy team member do to help themselves get past that quote unquote paralysis by analysis stage and move forward to taking an action step? So Emily, I'm going to defer or ask that you respond to this next question. Absolutely, and happy to respond. And oh man, Nick, the dreaded paralysis by analysis. That struggle is real. It's a hamster wheel that we all fall into. We've all done it and we all continue to do it. And that's okay. Um, as pharmacists, it, your whole profession is based around attention to detail, right? Like that's how you take really great care of patients, understanding calculations for dosing, making sure that the prescription is matching what's in the bottle that you're sending out to the patient. There's lots of alignment and that alignment is integral to your profession. And so falling into this analysis by paralysis is, again, it's very real and, and that's okay. So here's how we're gonna get out of that hamster wheel we just talked about. Uh, the measures that we display in EQIP are simple, numerator over denominator, just simple fractions. So that feels like it should line up, right? You should be able to go in, look at your software system and say, yep, I have these patients and that matches what's in EQIP. Unfortunately, data is not as uh, simple as that. And so there are lots of layers to measure calculation and the process behind um, measure calculations. There's so many different factors and it's unfortunate that sometimes in the pharmacy, you don't have line of sight into all of those factors regarding what may be going on with the patient. Um, if they are truly a hospice eligible patient or if they are um, an ESRD patient, you may have some insight into that, but the data just doesn't flow the same across the healthcare continuum that it does for pharmacy. 
So with that in mind and understanding that, you know what, sometimes all of these numbers are not going to tie off exactly, that should not prohibit us from taking great action on the performance scores and those simple calculations that are displayed for you in Equip. So what we can do as far as taking action is uh, look at your results, understand those numbers that are negatively impacting your score, understand first and foremost that to get them to positively impact your score is not a, a one and done type scenario either. Um, a lot of times these are patients and members that you have to continually outreach to. So leveraging technology is a great and efficient way to be sure that you're outreaching to these patients that need help not just once in a measurement year, but they need help every month. So leveraging again technology, whether it's an IVR system, calling the member for medication review, refill reminders, um, medication synchronization tools, those are all really good examples of ways that you can take action at the member level and are efficient ways that you can leverage that technology across all of your patients and members so that hopefully you can get out ahead of, of these adherence curves that Cora just talked about and start to make an impact before um, some of your patients are at the end of the measurement year and unfortunately unrecoverable or to a point in time where they will never count in the numerator for your score. So taking, again, taking action now, leveraging technology and understanding where your opportunities are month over month are re really three important and key steps in this process. Thanks, Emily. When going through this in a year, whether it was putting together the question uh, for the recording or to going through your response, it really brings back a message that I heard frequently uh, when I was a Boy Scout from my Scoutmaster, Mr. Wilson. And his, his messaging to me, this was perhaps some of my first experiences in being a quote unquote leader. Um, you can get a lot of frustration when you hit a wall on some things. And his messaging was, um, his messaging was that you can't fix everything and, and focus on where you can have an impact. The idea here is that there are going to be some things that are out of your control. Um, and it doesn't do anybody um, any good, really, if we're putting time in having or sharing some of those frustrations or focusing on those frustrations. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't look at how those things can or should change in the future. And I think that's an important lesson as well. Um, but I think the recommendation here, and as you, as you spoke about it, it's where are patients where we can have an impact. Let's continue to focus on those each and every single month. And when there are instances where we can't impact the data, um, don't let don't let that get us down. We get to control our attitude and our approach on what we do next. I couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely, Mr. Wilson was spot on, Nick. I'll be sure to let him know about that. That his message is Please. still good now. Excellent. Uh, sorry. All right. So I'm glad we covered the topic of what you can do to take some actionable steps. Uh, in previous podcasts, we have covered the importance of goal setting and adaptability. That's been just from a general personal uh, standpoint, but we want to tie it in as well to how you utilize performance data. So given how year to date scores slope downward, it is very easy to perceive this as a negative consequence, and it can be very disheartening for some pharmacists that are trying their best to prevent this result. Unfortunately, it is almost a guarantee that they should see this result of scores decreasing. But let's try to think about this in a positive manner. What are some ways that pharmacists can set realistic and positive goals to track their year-to-date scores so that they're ending the year with a success? Cora, I'll uh, pitch this question to you and look forward to your response. Yeah, thanks, Nick. And just to continue my sandcastle analogy from before, it's impossible for that kind of idyllic sandcastle to last all year. You have to weather the changing tides um, and really just kind of understand that that's okay, that that is ex an expected thing that's going to happen. But there is a way that you can try to ensure that what you're doing is 
trying to reach improvement year over year. And so when I look at kind of goal setting, I would look in two kind of distinct places. I would look externally first. So, okay, how am I doing in comparison to maybe some averages that exist in the marketplace, um, maybe some goals that are, are published by CMS if we're looking at a Medicare population and just really compare, okay, where am I at um, and where is just kind of the standard that is being set out there. And then I would kind of turn and about face and then look internally at myself and at my pharmacy and, and understand okay, over time, whether it be year over year or month over month as the year progresses, um, where am I performing and how is that performance changing over those time periods? And so the real goal here is to just ensure that we're able to set a goal for ourselves. So if we're sitting at the first period um, of the year where we're seeing the first kind of iteration of the performance measurement for the year, um, I wanna sit down and say, okay, I know that I was at a certain percentage last year, but I think I can be 2%, 3%, hey, maybe even 5% better than I was last year in, in any given measure. And so I think the, the real intent is to set those goals for yourself, um, set stretch goals, set manageable goals, but just set any goal is really um, the idea here. So what, when you set those goals at the end of the day, we're, we're not here to try and have the best scores. What we're here is to do is to make sure that our patients are being taken care of in the best way possible. And so medication safety and utilization is such a huge piece of just the complex healthcare puzzle that exists out there. Um, but pharmacists in, in the, the fashion of using goals and setting goals and achieving those goals are really in an optimal role to make improvements happen year over year um, for their patients and for their pharmacy. So this makes me think another catchphrase that I had from my scoutmaster, Mr. Wilson. And after each weekly meeting, we would talk about not what we wanted to do next week, but actually the next month, what we wanted to achieve. And his thought with this was prior planning prevents poor performance. And this goal setting, I think is a lot of the same. I get a lot of the same part out of it. Uh, Cora, to your point, it's, it's not just having one goal that can be easily achieved. We need to have different iterations that are there. We want to have motivation for the staff, right? We, we do want to make sure that there is a goal that we uh, can make sure we can put the ball in play and we can get see some progress and have some actionable success that we can point back to our team. But we need to have something that is a stretch goal or stretch goals, various iterations. When I look at different pharmacy performance dashboards or when I'm consulting with pharmacies about how they can help motivate their staff, it's important to consider some of the different uh, items. So you referenced whether it's looking at star rating scores or equip average or state average. Uh, there's different parts where it's going to be difficult to be successful across every landscape that we're trying to hit or every goal. Um, but as long, and since these are longitudinal continuous items, it's important for us to always have a focus. So having multiple goals and making those increasingly more difficult or unique as you get along the way, it's an important point to keep up the attention and focus so that uh, nobody is slipping from the primary goal of addressing these uh, performance scores, but ultimately for improving patient care activities. So Cora and Emily, I think this has been a very productive conversation, and I appreciate both of you uh, for bringing your insight to this topic. Um, as we get towards the end of the year, or even as we start to progress more through the year, perhaps towards the end of the summer, we'll come back with another update about how you can look at year-to-date scores. I think, Cora, you referenced that August release uh, being kind of the peak of performance scores at that time, so I think we may be penciling in an episode further talking about this topic during that time period. So both of you are aware at this stage of the podcast, we moved to some lighthearted questions for our guest. Today, we've talked about how we turn a perceived negative into a positive as it relates to performance scores. I want to keep on that topic of turning a perceived negative into a positive. Uh, currently, there are countless stories about pharmacists and other healthcare providers setting the tone and stepping up to provide exceptional patient care during the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like for us to keep up that positivity and to double down on the positive impact of pharmacists. So, Cora, Emily, are there any experiences that you've seen or heard firsthand or that you've seen otherwise about the impact of pharmacy and pharmacists during this time? 
Wow. Yeah, I, I really can't just choose one. Um, I think there's been so many stories out there, whether they're published, not published, of just pharmacists really stepping up to the plate. And this can be done really in a long-term care setting, a clinical setting, um, pharmacists serving rural populations, setting up COVID test sites, um, even just working on expanding pharmacy benefits to, to meet the needs of uh, of patients. And so I think you name it, pharmacists are out there stepping up to the plate and making it happen. Um, and I think that that is a, a really true testament to kind of the, the power of the pharmacy profession. Yeah, Nick, um, I'll just piggyback off of what Cora, you just ended with. I personally am so incredibly excited for the opportunity that comes about from COVID-19. Um, Continuing on that positivity train, right? Obviously, COVID-19 is uh, something that no one has had seen coming. How could we ever have predicted such a situation that we all find ourselves in at this point in time? However, something pharmacists have been doing for decades, centuries at this point in time is providing excellent patient care. And they get the, the ability to do that often, right? And if there are any good items that come out of COVID-19. And, and I think that as the situation evolves, hopefully we'll be able to find some good items, spending more time with family. It's actually a really great thing um, and something we should all be really fortunate to hopefully be able to take advantage of. But for those that are uh, first responders and pharmacists, certainly on the front lines of healthcare, having an opportunity to expand what you're doing on a daily basis um, into the professional services arena is a huge opportunity. And it's just really exciting to see the health plan payer, PBM community take, a, take hold of that um, and laying the, the tracks and pipes for reimbursement methodologies down to pharmacies to be able to provide tests, um, whether they are actual um, tests to, for COVID-19 itself, antibody testing, et cetera, but just expanding the scope of the pharmacy practice, I think is certainly one positive outcome of this uh, COVID-19 situation that we find all of ourselves in at this very point in time. And I'm hopeful for the profession that we can see all of this opportunity through to fruition and continue to, to showcase for healthcare and, and the continuum of healthcare just exactly how important pharmacy is um, in that continuum. So, yeah, it's absolutely been a whirlwind for everybody involved. I was uh, listening to a, a different podcast than our own. Uh, one to try to learn what we can do better or get some best practices tips from others. But uh, with this particular podcast, I, they, they had on a, a, a guest where uh, their best friend was a, a doctor leading a COVID response. And one of the things that he talked about was the importance of, you know, each day, end of the day, he'd call his friend to make sure he was going in, you know, checking with him, you know, how the day go how did you support your patient? How can I support you? And I think it's an important part. Um, we all have different roles to play in different ways that we're uh, being, we're handling the COVID-19 situation, but this would be my plug, taking it from, uh, taking this recommendation from others that I've, that I've heard that, you know, really to check in with your pharmacist, your other healthcare providers that are working and that are handling, whether it's handling COVID patients directly, but providing any aspect of patient care um, working on the front lines in any sense that's there. Um, the communication and support is essential during this time. Um, and so it's an important aspect for each of us to remain connected. But <clears throat> for today's purpose, um, Cora and Emily, I thank you in, for joining and sharing your perspective, knowledge, and uh, most of all, the positivity. This is an important conversation for us to have. And it, because this focus on improving quality and streamlining operations uh, is very important for pharmacies to be successful today. Part of the intentions with this podcast series in general is to help share messaging and process that can assist in making pharmacies more efficient, to spend more time and energy focused on improving patient care activities. Understanding how to use this year-to-date data can very much have that effect when deployed effectively. I know that I fall into this trap all too frequently, and that's spending too much time um, accomplishing what is directly in front of me. But what's important for us uh, is not just to address the short-term items, 
but also having a profound effect when we take the opportunity to look ahead and be successful with those initiatives. Sometimes taking the time to look ahead helps us determine a smoother path to success. And with today's information, we hope that it helps your pharmacy achieve that same goal. Hopefully you have enjoyed this episode. And if you would like more information on how to use year-to-date scores in Equip, please check out our educational video library, which you can find in Equip or on our PQS YouTube channel. Please check those out and let us know what you think. Finally, our team here at PQS has a couple of favors to ask of you, our podcast listener. First, we encourage you to share this podcast with two friends, because if you share this with two friends, each of them shares it with two friends, it really helps us hit a larger listening audience. Second, we also want to take a moment to remind you to subscribe to the podcast wherever you may find it. And then if you have any questions or topics you would like us to address, please contact us. The best way to do so is to email info at pharmacyquality.com. Let us know what is on your mind and what we can address so that you are fully informed. Our goal is to continuously improve our podcast content and to provide meaningful information to our listeners based on the current topics in healthcare, technology, and quality measurement. We want to help you become as effective as possible in how you care for patients and improve public health outcomes. So until next time, we wish you well.